Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions and I'm putting out a bulletin. Apple has thrown a wrench into the whole copy your home folder onto an external hard drive with the latest update 15.2. When I try to copy my home folder that I'm logged into on my internal drive to the external drive, I get this error. And people have been reporting this. Not everybody's had the problem, probably because they haven't updated to 15.2 yet and tried it. So I did some serious digging last night. It turns out it's two tiny little files that are in the user library. And Apple did update these. And I'm just showing you the lower folder is my MacBook Air, which is still on 15.1.1. And the upper folder is my M4 Mac Mini, which has been updated to 15.2. And the files have different names. They've updated these files. I don't know if this is a bug or Apple threw this in there intentionally. I just have no idea, but it's definitely because of the update. I'm able to copy my whole home folder like I showed in the videos with my MacBook Air that's running 15.1.1, but the Mac Mini now has 15.2 on it, and that's when this started. So I'm going to show you three different methods you can use to copy your home folder to your external drive and use it in that location going forward. So I recommend watching the whole video and then picking the one that you're most comfortable with using. And I have a little bonus tip at the end that you're going to like. So method one is using a time machine backup to copy your home folder to your external drive. Obviously you have to have a dedicated drive for time machine and then the drive that you want to move your home folder to. One advantage to this method is I don't have to log out of my Apple account to do this. So the home user account I want to use is Lance Backup User. Okay, that is the one account I have on my internal drive that I want to move to the external drive. So now I'm going to my Time Machine Backup that I did today, and I'm going to go in there and look at Data and Users, and there it is, Lance Backup User and it's small and it makes it easy for me to copy. But if this was your account that you've got all your iCloud data and everything in, you can do the same exact thing. So I'm just gonna drag it over to the users folder that I created on my external drive and that's where I'm gonna use it going forward after I activate it. So as you can see, no errors, no issues. It doesn't matter if you're logged into iCloud when you're doing this because you're not doing it from the internal account. And you're not gonna get that error that Apple has thrown in to 15.2. So bingo, it copied absolutely no issues. And now we're just gonna go activate it. And I show you how to activate it in my other videos, but we're just gonna go through the process very quickly here. I go to users and groups. I go to backup user. I hold down the control key on the keyboard and then I click on advanced options and put in my backup user administrative password. And you can see the current path is users Lance backup user which is the internal drive. So we want to change that to the external new location. So we're going to go to our home X, which is what I call my external drive. And I'm going to select on the Lance backup user. So now our path is the external drive to the backup user. We hit OK and the computer is going to tell you to reboot and then you have to go through some basic setup stuff, but it doesn't erase anything. It's just relocating your user to the external drive. Method two is to copy your home folder using the terminal app and this will copy everything, all your hidden files. It's like a clone and it's probably the most foolproof way of doing this. And for this method to work, you have to be logged into the internal account that you want to copy. And the other thing is that you cannot be logged into your Apple account, otherwise you will get an error, it will not work. You have to log out of your Apple account, make sure you're logged out, reboot after you log out, and then do this. So we launch the terminal app, which is in our utilities folder, and we type in the text that I have above. So we're gonna type sudo space rsync space dash avh space dash dash progress space 
tilde, which is on the upper left hand side of your keyboard, hold the shift key, it looks like a little wave, slash space. And the last space is very important after the slash or else it will not work. If you mistype one little thing, it's just gonna error out and it won't copy. And now that we've got that type, we're gonna go to our external drive where we wanna copy our user to, and we're gonna create a new folder and have it named exactly like it is on the internal drive. In my case, I'm using the Lance Backup User. Is the internal user account I'm going to be copying. So I wanna name it the same. And we'll just double check that. I'm gonna look at my user folder on my Macintosh HD, and there it is, Lance Backup User. That is the one we're gonna be copying to our external home X drive, which is what I just call my external drive. You can call yours whatever you want but that is what we're gonna use. So now instead of having to type all the information, I'm just gonna drag my empty folder from the external drive into the terminal window, and it creates the path for us to the place we wanna copy our user folder to. Then you type in your login password. You don't see it on the screen when you type it in. You just type it in and you hit enter, and then it will begin the copying process. And it may ask you several questions uh, and you just hit allow and you hit okay and then the copying will continue. And then when it's done, basically you now have a cloned copy of your home folder on the external drive. And if you got an error when you first tried to do the copy, that means something is not typed correctly. So just try it again. And as you can see, all the files that I have on my internal desktop are now also in my copy. So all the files, everything is copied from the internal to the external. It's an exact duplicate. So now we're gonna activate the user account by going to System Settings, users and groups, and then we go to the account with the same name, the one that's still on the internal drive, and we're gonna hold down control on the keyboard and click on our username and let up on advanced options. Type in our user password and select the new path for our home directory, our user account on the external drive. So we hit choose, we go find our drive, and then we select users and backup user. And make sure you're selected on the user account folder and hit open. Double check your path to make sure it's correct and then hit okay. And then the computer will ask you to reboot. After you reboot, it'll take a little time before the login window will allow you to put in your password. And Apple will have a few prompts on the screen. You go through those and you can now log into your Apple account on your external drive and use that going forward. And there have been a couple of times where it got stuck when I first tried to log in and I had to force shut down the computer, log in again, and then all was good. And method three is the simple drag and drop method of the home folder, but there's a little bit of a trick now that Apple threw the wrench into the equation. You have to be logged into an administrative account, but not the one that you are trying to copy. So if you don't have one, set one up. And you wanna keep that one as your backup internal user. And if you're getting this message, it means you are not logged out of your Apple account on the account that you were trying to copy. You have to be logged out of your Apple account for this method to work. So I'm gonna create another user, but just say that you already have a user with a lot of data in it, and that's the one you wanna move off the computer into the, onto the external drive. This is the same way to go. So we're gonna create an administrative account. We're gonna give it a name. I'm calling it test user. But again, this is just for an example. So pretend the test user is actually your big user account that you wanna get off the computer and put on the external drive. So now we're gonna move our test user account. We go into our Macintosh HD, test users, there it is gonna open my external drive and open up my users folder. There's my external user I have already on there. And I'm just gonna drag and drop it. And I get this message saying I gotta put in my user password. But you can see I'm putting in the user password 
for the account I'm logged into, which is my backup user, not the test user. And it copied no problem, no errors, because my test user account is not logged into my Apple ID, my Apple account, and I am not logged into the account that I'm trying to copy. I'm logged into the backup user and I'm copying the test user. Now this is important. So now we're logging into the test user account on the internal drive. I know we already moved it, but the point being is we now have to activate it so that it's going to use the external drive location going forward. But we have to do it from the same user account. We can't copy from the same user account, but we have to activate it from the same user account. So we go into advanced options, we type in our password, and now we're going to go select the path on the external drive. And now we have activated the external test user account. And now the computer will ask you to reboot. Whenever you move your user folder, you have to go through these initial prompts with Apple and you can now log into your Apple account. And Apple Intelligence still works because the operating system is still running on the internal drive. Apple Intelligence only works if you're booting off the internal drive. If you boot off your external, you don't get to use Apple Intelligence. And now I've got one more trick up my sleeve, and that is to create a SIM link for your applications folder. And after messing with this for a couple of weeks with the external user setup, I have figured out this is the best situation for your applications folder. It should reside outside of the user's folder, not inside it. What we're going to do is create a SIM link, which will go into our user folder. And when we do that, automatically all our apps will go into Launchpad and our App Store apps will download into the external applications folder as long as you have the checkbox on apps larger than one gig set to download on your external drive. But only apps larger than one gig will actually go there. If they're smaller than one gig from the App Store, they're still going to go on your internal applications folder and you're going to have to either leave them there or move them to the external drive yourself and then delete them from the internal folder. So we're going to launch terminal and we're going to type in sudo space ln space dash s space and then drag over our applications folder from our external drive and then hit enter and bingo. If you look at our user folder now, I sorry I had it blocked there, but you can see there is an applications folder with a little arrow on it and that is the sim link and it's basically just a system alias. So just as an example, I'm going to copy over Resident Evil 2 into my applications folder on my external drive. And once it gets there, it's going to show up in Launchpad. We're going to go look at games. It's not there, right? It doesn't exist. So we're going to let it finish copying and I'll just speed the rest of that up. And now we're going to go look at Launchpad again. And there it is. Bingo. Our apps are now getting automatically put into Launchpad from our external drive. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.